Today is a pretty exciting day, and that is because today is a new laptop kind of day. Yes, this is the Dell Inspiron 14. I'm going to be honest, on the website there is nothing particularly impressive about this laptop. It's a pretty mid-range device with mid-range specs and a bog standard design. What's impressive however is just how much I ended up paying for this laptop. It was meant to cost, at RRP, around £600. How much did I pay? £160. Yes, you heard me right, I paid only £160 for a 14-inch laptop with a Ryzen processor. This is super exciting stuff, and you're probably wondering how I did it. So stick around if you're interested. Today we're going to be unboxing this thing, getting it set up, and having a first overview look of exactly what you get for 600 or in my case, £160. I'm going to be evaluating this thing as if I bought it at that £600 retail price. At the end we'll come back to it and talk a little bit about how I feel at the price that I paid, that £160. Hello everybody, my name is Robert and this is Review Crew. Okay, so here we are with the box itself. Now, it is pretty nondescript as laptop boxes go. As we take a look around though, on the top here, we do see that it is AMD. You can get this in a couple of different varieties from the AMD Ryzen all the way to the normal Intels. This one here has the Ryzen 5 5500U processor at six cores and 12 threads. As we look around the box as well, we're going to get a few more pieces of information along the side here. Um, it's it's kind of hard to read, but basically what we've got here is a 14-inch 1080p display. In terms of performance, we've obviously got that processor there. We also have 8GB of RAM, but I'm going to be upgrading this to 16GB. It was a one 8GB stick, so I bought another one for around £20, and that's going to be going straight in here. A 256 gigabytes SSD, not the most storage ever, it's actually kind of low, but uh, again, that's something that can quite easily be upgraded or just use external drives. And it's obviously running into internal graphics as well. But let's go ahead and drop the box down, take a look at what we get on the inside. Peeling that tab on the top here. There you go. We're going to have a couple of things to look at. The first being, of course, the power cable. So let's pull the power cable out of the way and actually get the laptop out as well so we don't have to back about with the box and we can get it right out of the way. So behind all of this cardboard, we do obviously get the laptop itself, which I'm going to drop off to the side for the moment, and some paperwork as well. If you're interested in the model, it's the Inspiron 145415 uh, and all your paperwork. You really shouldn't need this paperwork, but it's there if you do. We obviously do get our power brick as well. It's a pretty standard power brick and it's very dark compared to this background. Unfortunately, I was expecting it to be USB power, um, USB-C powered, but we do appear to still have a sort of DC style output there. And of course we have the UK plug adapter. Let's have a quick look at that charger though and see just how much energy this, this outputs. So this one is a 65 watt charger. It's really not particularly powerful, but it doesn't need to be. And of course we do get the laptop itself. Let's go ahead and peel off some of the side, some of the, uh, let's go ahead and peel off some of the tape here to get it out of its plasticky prison. It's obviously in the name that this is a 14 inch display. I'm very much used to the MacBook Pro, which is a 13 inch display in my case. So 14 inches is actually an upgrade. And you're also probably wondering why I decided to go with this laptop. No matter how good of a deal it was, why did I need a laptop? Well, there were a couple of reasons. The first one being my workload that I have um, requires a fair amount of RAM. When I originally bought the MacBook Pro, I bought it with eight gigabytes of RAM, and that was fine for my use case. I really didn't see a need for any more than that. 
But now I'm starting to program a lot more and do a lot more stuff with it, I'm finding the limitations are just a little bit too much. So I just needed something that I could upgrade quite quickly and this seemed like a really good option. Obviously on the top we have the Dell logo here. It is a plastic case. On one side we are seeing power port. We have a full sized HDMI, a USB type, uh, a USB 3 and a USB type C. Flipping over to the other side, on the other side we have a headphone jack. We have another USB type A and a micro USB and a micro USB slot as well. Let's drop the laptop down and open up the lid so we can get a really good look at that keyboard. Now what's quite interesting about this laptop and the way it works is if I flip it onto its side as we've opened it up you'll notice there that the hinge is actually elevated slightly and what that does is that means that we can get much better airflow around the bottom of the device here. So actually airflow and thermals are very good on this style of laptop. Flipping it back down we can see the keyboard here. It is a full size keyboard and we've got our trackpad as well. The trackpad itself seems fine. It's a downside smaller than what I'm used to coming from the MacBook Pro but I'm totally fine with that. We can also see up here the power button is also a fingerprint reader so that's Windows Hello and all of that. We can see on the stickers on the bottom here this is obviously a Ryzen 5 and we do have the AMD Radeon graphics as well. There's that screen it is a 14 inch full 1080p display and um, we've got our webcam on the top there which I'm sure we can do a little bit of a demo of later if people really care. Um, the keyboard itself is fine, the colour is not the best, I think I'd have preferred a black keyboard but that's just personal preference. Powering it on here, this is running Windows 11 out of the box, let's just um, see if it's got any juice at all to power up doesn't look like it does so what I'm gonna have to do is plug this thing in and just start getting it ready let's go ahead and do that now but of course guys before we get on with today's video if this is the first time that you're seeing my face on your screen then one lucky you and two go down there hit that subscribe button smash that bell notification icon so you get notified every time I upload okay so we've got it all plugged in now now let's press that power button and see if it's gonna want to boot up now There we go. So now it is booting up. We're obviously going to see the Dell logo and this comes with Windows 11 installed by default, which is nice because I actually haven't had a chance to properly use Windows 11. You can see some of my videos about it up there on the description down below, but this is the first time I'm properly going to be using it. So that's very exciting. As I start to type away on the keyboard though, it... there you go. It doesn't feel particularly bad. I, I, I was expecting it to feel pretty mushy and it does. There's certainly no mechanical feel there but that's not a bad thing. I'm obviously in the UK so let's go ahead and select that and move forwards. The UK layout for a keyboard, that's fine. We can skip all of this for now. Let's really quickly connect this up to my network but you guys can't know my password, so we'll time lapse. Okay, so while that's doing its thing, typing in that password, this keyboard did not feel nice. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little bit spoiled because I'm running a, um, a Razer Huntsman Mini for my main keyboard up behind me, but that's not such a bad thing. We're all connected up. I very much doubt I will be using this laptop as a laptop. It will probably be docked for most of its life in a USB-C hub connecting it with my keyboard and mouse externally. So I don't have a problem with the mouse pad or the keyboard, particularly in this instance. I tell you what though, this thing is incredibly thin and actually very light as well. I'm pretty impressed. I'll obviously get some B-roll of it all in a little bit, but um, I'm, I'm going to try and see if we can see there you can see that, strangely, the exhaust fans are going to be pushing quite a lot of hot air onto the screen. 
Having the air, the hot air being pushed onto the screen is a little bit of a strange decision, but I'm sure there was a reason for it. It's obviously going to just continue doing its updates. It's probably got some Windows updates to do. So let's come back to it once it's done. One thing that's surprising me already, you got to the fingerprint step, but the fans have already kicked in and they're audibly quite loud. I'm just going to shut up for a second so you can hear that. I don't know if you can hear that, but the fans have already kicked in and this really isn't a much of a workload. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and set up a fingerprint as well. and we'll see just how accurate this is. I've used Dell fingerprints in the past and they've been perfectly fine. We have a nice new introduction here as well, explaining a little bit about Windows 11 and what it can do. But we'll let these updates happen. Okay, so those updates have all finished and we're finally into the Windows 11 operating system. One of the things that I'm most worried about with this laptop is how much bloatware there's going to be installed uh, alongside everything. So let's go ahead and go into all apps here and take a look at what we've got. And uh, we've got um, obviously all of the Microsoft suite, there's the AMD software tools, quite a lot of Dell related things, so we've got um, cine color for making sure that that screen is nice and color correct uh what else have i seen here so we've obviously got mcafee um that can go almost immediately i refuse to use mcafee in general um it's slow and just laborious to to actually use uh, outside of that though there's basically nothing it's all just Microsoft related products that are uh, come installed with Windows 11 by default. So bloatware is very, very minimal and I like that. Okay, let's have a look at what else we've got here. So obviously we've got Edge installed by default. I'm just going to close that down. Now one thing I will say about this screen right away is it doesn't look amazing. Um, you can definitely tell that it's a 1080p display. It's not the sharpest thing in the world. When I'm moving that mouse around, um, you can see quite significant blurring. Um, I'm gonna see, I'll see if I can get that. There you go, you can actually see it on the camera as well. It, it's not the best display. Um, for 600 pounds, I would have expected a much better display than this. In terms of viewing angles as well, they're pretty, pretty awful actually. As we move the laptop around, it's, it's almost invisible now to, to both me and the camera. So that display is, is not a good display. I, I would highly recommend changing that display. Um, or So this is not a good display. I would highly recommend using an external display if you're going to be using this thing for any prolonged period of time. But in general though, I actually don't hate this device. Let's load up some YouTube and have a listen to those speakers.
here we are. It's got some royalty free music that we can play. Let's just have a listen. Let's actually see if I can bring this volume up. Okay, so listening to that audio, it's actually not bad at all. I've heard a lot, lot worse in terms of speakers. So that might be an advantage for you. Again, I'll probably be hooking this up to an external set of speakers alongside the external monitor and everything else. This is purely going to be a dock ball for me. Let's go ahead and see if we can find a game to download and play. I really don't expect this to do very well at all at gaming, but let's take a look. Okay, so I've had the laptop running for a little while now, and there's a few things that kind of spring to mind. The first one is this screen is just awful. Um, it's very, very low um, resolution compared to most other laptops on the market right now. It Color reproduction is just not great. Viewing angles are awful. If you're buying a laptop because you need a nice screen, this is definitely not the one. The same with the keyboard. If you're looking for a laptop with a good keyboard, this is not the one that you're looking for. The keyboard is mushy and just really not pleasant to type on. What we can go ahead and do though, is we can just really quickly search the camera and we'll bring up that webcam there. Because this is the first time that I'm going to have seen uh, what this looks like as well. So there's the camera, there's me. Um, it's not not awful quality actually. I, I've seen I've seen much much worse. Let's uh, full screen it there. Yeah, I I'd say that's that's a pretty good um, webcam. It's definitely not market leading. It's definitely nothing like what you would find on the M1 Max um, or the M1 Max Max <laughs> or M1 Pro. It's certainly not what you would find on any of the Apple devices with M1 chips or the advanced M1 chips, but it will certainly do for the occasional Zoom call or meeting. So when it comes to the question of does it game? Well, actually yes, it can to a certain extent. I've gone ahead and downloaded the Xbox app and downloaded a particular game that I always loved to play. And that is Sunset Overdrive. I've had to bring down the resolution to 720p. Uh, that, that was the first problem and I've also had to drop down everything to the minimum. It actually warns me here on the screen that minimum specifications haven't been met for this game. So it's, it's just dropped everything down to the lowest. Even running this thing at 720p, it doesn't look great. As, as we can see here, this video just doesn't play particularly well. But let's skip this and just jump into the game and you can see some kind of performance. Remember this game probably is still fairly graphically intensive. It is old, but it is still a very, very good game. So let's, um, let's continue where I left off. If you were looking to buy this laptop for gaming, you've bought this laptop for the wrong reason. So here it is, in game here, looking around, it feels okay. It's, it's definitely not built for, to be a gaming machine. And I do not recommend playing games on it, especially not this intensive. For games like, let's say, Fortnite or um, even CSGO, it would be perfectly fine. But for the more graphically intensive games, particularly like Sunset Overdrive, it just doesn't hold up. And we can also hear those fans kicking up there as well. 
So how did I end up getting this laptop so cheap? That's the big question here, and actually there were a few key factors that managed to get this this cheap. And the first one, and I think the biggest one, is big thanks to the Hot Deals UK community. If you like a good deal and you like to find glitches and price changes, then Hot Deals UK is a great place and great community to go to because I have got a lot of really cheap and really good tech through different deals and glitches that I wouldn't have known about unless they were posted on that Hot Deals forum. So this one was particularly interesting. This one I actually bought directly from Dell. The glitch that was happening here was pretty fun actually. It worked across basically all of Dell's website. You could go to any laptop or any desktop and you could add it to your basket and when you went to add a yearly, um, and when you went to add a yearly support plan or even a monthly support plan, instead of adding that value on like it should do, it actually took it away from the price. I have absolutely no idea how someone at Dell managed to do this, but yeah, you could actually just take value away from the computer by adding a yearly and a monthly plan. So that was the first thing. They also did have a code that was for 15% off. Pop that in, that worked, and it stacked with the discounts for um, the monthly and the yearly plans. So that brought it down quite heavily. On top of that, my student discount also worked, which I thought was quite incredible. So I could actually stack, I think it was three different discounts in this case. And finally, I went through a website called Top Cashback, and they gave me a little bit of cashback as well. This laptop was meant to be with me about three weeks ago, two weeks ago, but it got delayed and delayed and delayed because of chip shortages and everything else. So Dell said to me, we'll give you 40 quid back. So they, charged, they gave me 40 pounds back off of the value of the computer, bringing it down to 160 pounds. It really was an incredible deal and I don't think I've ever found anything quite like it again. Um, as I mentioned, I have bought some more RAM for this as well, another 20, um, 20 quid on top of the 160 that I paid for another 8 gig of RAM. £180 for this machine, I think is something incredible. Just because of the performance that we're getting out of it, it can even play some games. But on most daily workloads, such as uh, email, writing, uh, writing text documents, Maybe even doing a little bit of my workflow, which is games development and augmented reality development, it didn't hiccup while I was running Unity and other applications as well. It seems like an incredibly competent machine for that £160. £600, however, I find it a little harder to, um, to recommend, mainly because of that screen and that keyboard. They are both just absolutely awful. If you're going to be having this thing docked all the time like I am, maybe it won't affect you and you don't care too much. But for the performance to price ratio, there really isn't much of a deal to be had here for £600. And then you could probably find something cheaper elsewhere. However, if you can get this on sale or for glitched pricing like I did, you've got yourself a great machine that is very, very competent.